What we should draw here are a triangle and a quadrilateral, and here's part of the magic of this. It can be absolutely any triangle you like, no special properties. Absolutely any quadrilateral you like, no special properties. In fact, what I want you to try and do with these shapes is make them as unspecial as you can. Like, don't make it a parallelogram or even a trapezium. Don't make it isosceles. Actually, now that I look at it, that kind of is isosceles. But anyway, that was a mistake. Um, make them completely random. And then let's see what properties emerge if we just do some very simple things. So for starters, with your ruler, I want you to go ahead and measure these two sides so that you can find the midpoints of those two sides. So AB and AC. I will point out, you could do this with the other, um, with two, any two sides that you like, um, but let's try and do it with the same pair so that we all are looking at something reasonably similar. Go ahead and find those midpoints. Let's call that midpoints P and Q. Now, just by measuring out midpoints, so I probably should, like you, also mark in the fact that they're midpoints. Just by virtue of the fact that they are midpoints, we've created something in here which has this magical relationship with the existing triangle. If you go ahead and join this interval, PQ. By the way, as I join this up, minor note, this is an interval, not a line. An interval begins and it ends. A line goes forever in both directions. Does anyone know what it's called when it's like half-half? When it starts somewhere and then it just goes forever? It starts with an R. It's a very uncommon word. Um, we call it a ray. Rays aren't used very much, so that's why you don't hear about them very often. Okay, now have a look at PQ. Do you notice that interval PQ has a relationship with the rest of the triangle? Namely, see this last side down here, the one we didn't bisect? Do you notice that these two lines are, well, they look like they're parallel, right? Now, can we prove that this is the case? And we can using the idea of similarity. And this is not a very complicated proof. Look at it quickly with me. Because you've used one triangle to create this, and you've got these midpoints, right? What you've created is a pair of triangles whose sides are in ratio. Let me say that again. You've created a pair of triangles, APQ. In fact, I'm even going to say that in APQ, and also the original triangle, ABC, we have pairs of sides that are in the same ratio, right? So I can say, let's have a look at uh, AP on AB, AP on AB. So those two sides correspond to one another in the little triangle to the big triangle, okay? Well, AP on AB is equal to, because AP is um, halfway, right? Because it's halfway, if I wanted to prove this properly, I guess I would say AP on, I'm gonna divide this up into two pieces, like so. But, those two pieces on the bottom are the same. Do you agree? Like th that's what I've marked in, because P bisects. AB, like so. So that's very straightforward logic that this ratio is a half. But by exactly the same process, so I'm going to say similarly, since it is exactly the same, I can say that of the other sides over here, AQ and AC. So I'm going to say AQ on AC equals a half. Right. So now what I've established is that corresponding sides are in the same ratio, yeah? So AQ on AC. So I've got those corresponding sides in proportion. Now, to prove similarity, I need one more piece of information. Um, there's two different ways I could go. Have a look at the diagram and you tell me, what other piece of information could I add to this? Because this is not enough on its own that would give me similarity. Does anyone see it? I see, yeah, fantastic. Right up the top there, angle, what is it? Angle, uh, you could call it angle A, I suppose, but more, I think it's better to call it by its three letter name. So BAC or PAQ, that angle is in both triangles, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, angle BAC is common. 
Okay? So what that means is that now I can state that these two are similar. A, P, oops, two A's is not helpful. Now, what's my reason, by the way? What's a nice, succinct way to say this? It's not that all the sides that correspond are in the same proportion, because I don't actually know that. I only know two pairs. I've got two pairs and I've got an angle. So how would you word that? So if I were proving congruent, I would say SAS, right? Just as a quick note, the reason why for congruence we're okay with just abbreviations, but with similarity, excuse me, um, we, we like words, and I'm going to give you the words in a second. The reason why is because in congruence, when you're talking about the features, like the sides or the angles, you always mean they're equal, right? When you say SAS, you mean this side and this side are equal, this angle, this angle, this side, this side, all equal. But I'm saying different things about the sides here than I am from the angles when it comes to similarity. So here's a nice succinct way to say it. Sides about, now that word about I'm going to underline because in mathematics about means something different, uh, something, something more technical and specific. Uh, it means on, on either side or surrounding. So sides about equal angles, since they're about the same, they're about, they surround the same angle, they, are, they automatically correspond. Sides about equal angles are in proportion. That's it. Do you see that in seven words, I've captured everything about what I've stated here, what's equal and what's in the same ratio. You, you could say in the same ratio if you like, but I prefer saying one word rather than three. Okay. Now, I've proved that these are similar, but that was not what I set out to prove. What I was setting out to prove was that PQ is parallel to BC. So how can I use this fact to demonstrate that? Hmm. How can I use the fact that they're similar to get to the fact that they're parallel? What do you know about parallel lines? What kinds of information do we know about parallel lines? Yeah. They have the same slope. Okay. If I had, say, coordinates on here, and I went ahead and I, I found the gradients, I would find that they would match. That's good. What, uh, what else do I know? Yeah, Rush. Okay, so in addition to, because we know so many things about parallel lines, if I had a coordinate system, I would look at gradients. Unfortunately, at the moment, I don't right now. That doesn't stop me from putting one on, but I might be able to do it without by thinking about what Raj has suggested. I've got angles that correspond here and here. I also have angles that correspond here and here. And if they really are parallel, then the angles should be equal, right? They correspond, therefore they should be equal. Can I? Can I prove that that's the case from here? How do I prove it? What would be my next line? What angle might I refer to? I, I've got more than one choice. Or what choice is this actually? What would you like me to choose? Little secret. You know how we're a bit finicky about getting the letters of your similarity or congruence proofs? We like you to put them in order, like we, we like that. If you don't do it in order, we won't necessarily be all that upset. But we encourage it because it means you have to think geometrically about what's going on and what relates properly. One of the advantages of getting everything to line up is that you don't even need to look at the diagram anymore to know what matches up to what because you've done it all in the letters. So therefore I know automatically, without even looking back at my diagram anymore, presuming I did this properly, that angle APQ is going to exactly equal angle ABC because those letters correspond, right? So I can say that these correspond. And sure enough, there's APQ and there's ABC. They, they correspond, don't they? What's the reason? What's the reason? Corresponding angles? Fantastic. Ooh, now hold on. Corresponding angles are equal, but I don't actually know they're parallel just yet. That's what I want to prove. Right, so that'll be my last line, not my first one. Come in. Any, come in. Uh, yeah, thank you. See, this is the thing I know. This is the thing I've established, I have proved. Um, so now I can actually refer to that and say, I've got just enough space at the bottom to conclude that, hooray, like I was hoping, therefore, PQ is parallel 
to BC. And the reason is because corresponding angles, it's a different kind of corresponding, by the way. This is in triangles, and this is on parallel lines. Corresponding angles are equal. Sorry, that's a bit small and messy. OK. So you can see what I was mentioning before, that similarity allows us to show that things which seem to be just magic, like, hey, why does that become that? They have this foundation in very, very um, uh, watertight, deductive, rigorous logic. And so watch how we can use this cool, beautiful result that if you, like if I summarize this whole thing, what did we do? We joined up midpoints. Do you remember that? We joined midpoints in a triangle. Watch how that makes things even more magical.